all this is dr mobin sayed from drbean.com welcome to one more show so we'll continue our discussion about the autoimmunity caused by microbes this is especially in context of sars cov 2 but this is applicable to other things as well actually the example that i'm going to give is of um streptococcus so let's start i'm going to share my screen so this is drbean.com and this is the reference book this book is cellular and molecular immunology i have the kindle version the reference is present in the description so let's start our discussion we are continuing from yesterday so i'm assuming some part of it is already known to you if not there is a video that i did yesterday so this is the gifts for humanity at humanity's coffee shop so welcome to the coffee shop here is wh where we would start again self tolerance for our cells to kind of leave us alone immune cells the tolerance develops in the central part and in the peripheral part and for the immune system the center means where these cells are built these cells are built in bone marrow and also trained t cells especially in thymus so bone marrow and thymus together are called central part of the immune system or primary lymphoid tissues as well they are also called generative tissue because they make the cells and then train them autoimmunity or sorry the self tolerance means that our immune system is not responsive to an antigen that is our self antigen after being exposed to it today we'll discuss how b cells develop tolerance and then how that tolerance breaks down and it causes b cells to make antibodies that attack us this is a similar thing that would happen for example after covid myocarditis after vaccine myocarditis even the thromboembolism or thrombosis that occurs after vaccine this happens after streptococcus as well this can happen after streptococcus this can happen after many viruses as well this is why some viruses actually for example epstein barr virus they trigger autoimmune diseases some viruses cause cardiac tissue issues as well for, for example coxsackie virus and now we know sars cov 2 as well and even the vaccines so let's start here is a b cell the b cell's self tolerance and its breakdown usually usually b b cells are sitting one step behind the t cells remember it is the innate arm that gets a first exposure then innate arm activates the adaptive arm in the adaptive arm the first cells to be activated are t cells we discussed that yesterday t cells then in turn activate the b cells so b cells are sitting one layer behind the t cell so if the t cell has become tolerant then normally they will not activate the b cell and so b cell would automatically be not tolerant this is like if you call me and give a message to let's say my son and i refuse to give the message so then my refusal cause your message to not reach my son similarly if an antigen is present and b cell needs to be activated but t cell refuses to work on it then the b cell will not be able to work however please remember this b cell b cells can become automatically activated to polysaccharides and lipids especially self polysaccharides and lipids these b cells can become attached to them and become activated sometimes b cell become activated against our own proteins as well and that is also autoimmunity and we need to protect from that so now very quickly let's see how the tolerance develops and then how it breaks down so a b cell uses igm we used to study that igd as well but anyways from this book the reference it says igm so i'm just going to use igm b cell uses igm as their receptor that is they make igm and they put it on the surface and now it is acting as a receptor when the b cell is built central tolerance imagine now this is a b cell it is built in the bone marrow it is sitting in the bone marrow around the b cell 
are thousands of other cells, millions of other cells. Correct? Because it is bone marrow. It is full of cells and especially stem cells and then blood cells. So when the B cell is sitting in there, the cells that are on its surrounding, in its surrounding, these cells are presenting anti antigens on their surface. Every cell does that. Then there is going to be some antigens that are present in the soluble form. What are these antigens? These are just part of our, our proteins and lipids and polysaccharides. They're just floating around. And they're also being shown on the surface of the cells. So uh, you may have seen some art in which there is a model in the center and then so many people have their hands on it. It is a very similar thing. The B cell is sitting and then it is binding with the antigens on the surrounding cells. Now, because this is a naive cell, it's a baby cell, it becomes used to this antigen. When it is born, it is connecting with this antigen in abundance. That process alone turns this B cell off to attack the self antigen. It kind of becomes familiar right from the birth to say, well, this must be okay. And because of that, it becomes energetic, uh, energetic to it, meaning it doesn't work against it. However, if there is a B cell in the bone marrow, which when bound to the self antigen becomes reactive, that means it becomes activated, then what we do is in that bone marrow, we ask it to change its behavior or we will kill it. So what is that process? When a naive B cell, a baby B cell, is touched by so many antigens and it becomes activated by them or signals occur in it, it automatically knows that I am reacting to something that is around me and I'm reacting in a massive way. So what it does is there are two genes in it. RAG1 and RAG2 genes, they both become active. Why did they become active? Because this B cell, imagine this B cell, because it is surrounded by so many cells and they're all connecting with it, it has the fireworks happening inside from all activations. Those massive fireworks or secondary messenger, second messenger systems will cause RAG1 and RAG2 enzymes to become activated. RAG1 and RAG2 enzymes function is to restructure the binding unit of the B cell. Beautiful mechanism. I love it. So when they become activated, they start reactivating or rebuilding the binding part. This is also called immunoglobulin kappa light chain. So a new light chain is made. A new binding unit is formed. So if you look at my hand for a second, if my hand was like this, and this was attaching to a self antigen, I, when I become too much signaled, then I am asked to change my hand and my hand maybe become like this or like this. And if that change occurs, then this B cell is tested again. And if it still doesn't work, it still gets activated, then it is asked to do that. So if a B cell cannot change its hand, it is too rigid, it is too stiff, it is too stubborn, it says, you know what, I'm not going to change my hand, I'm just going to attach to the self antigen. Then we, and by we, the system by an unknown mechanism, it's actually not known how this happens. The system initiates an apoptosis in cell and kills it. So either the B cell changes its behavior and minds it ways and does not connect with self antigen or it is deleted. So this is called receptor editing or deletion. So these are the two outcomes if there is a self reactive B cell. On the other hand, if this B cell was reactive to self, but was weakly reactive. It was not too excited about it. And how could it be weakly reactive? Let's say all of these 
receptors, IgMs on the surface of B cell. Imagine a B cell with thousands of hands on it. And imagine all of those hands are not occupied with the self antigen, but some of them are. Or when it binds with the self antigen, some part of our tissue in the bone marrow, it binds it loosely. This is like you trying to grip something and that thing is slipping from your hand, loose binding, less affinity. If that happens, then this B cell will become energic. It will become an irresponsive or unresponsive cell. Weak binding to self antigens is a signal for the B cell to say, you know what, I don't think I should work. So in this case, what happens is this B cell, who now looks all tired, it does a few things to itself. This is how responsible our cells are, that even at the time of birth, when they're baby cells, they are so much trained to become responsible. So here, when it is weakly responding, it says, all right, you know what, I'm going to do the following. I'm going to reduce my receptors. I'm going to remove those hands on my surface because it looks like I'm binding with, our, with my own tissues. And that is a useless B cell because it is, it is existing, but it doesn't do anything. It doesn't bind with anything. Other possibility is that the signaling mechanism inside. Remember, we have done this discussion many times that there are things on the outside that are receptors. And when a ligand, ligand means anything that connects with that receptor, when a ligand, ligand binds with the receptor, most of the time, the inside of the cell, some signaling mechanism initiates and a response occurs. That signaling mechanism is decoupled. This is like if somebody presses the bell at, on a house, but the inside, the wires to the bell are cut. So they can keep pressing, but there is no response. These are the two ways that this B cell becomes inactivated. So now how many mechanisms are there for tolerance? One, the antibody binding region rearrangement or receptor editing, two, apoptosis or killing of the B cell, three, energy by reducing the number of receptor on the cell or decoupling the receptors from the function. Just like with Omicron, we are seeing decoupling of the cases from the severe outcomes. At least that's what we're hearing. Now, let's say once again, we have the B cells surrounded by lots of cells and it is actually not reacting to them. They are touching it, they're presenting the antigens, they're saying, hey, bind with this. And B cell is saying, you know what, I don't care. So if it is not reactive to self, remember yesterday we talked about it, that in the bone marrow, usually it is not possible that bacteria or viruses or fungi come in. We can have that infection, but normal healthy people, that doesn't happen. So whatever is in the bone marrow is self. So if it does not re react to self, then we say, hey, B cell, you are a good cell. Go out and do, the, do your job. Because we know that now if you will con connect with something, you are going to connect with something foreign. And that's what we want you to do. So imagine now this B cell, this is now called a mature B cell. It has shown maturity and responsibility. So we say, all right, go out in society, do the function. So when it goes out in the society and does the function that runs around in our body, if it becomes activated there to our self antigen incorrectly, now we need peripheral tolerance to come into action. That means this is a B cell that somehow escaped the training of self antigen. And we discussed that yesterday, that bone marrow or thymus, thymus or T-cell, bone marrow for B-cell, they cannot present all the possibilities of self-antigen to a cell for training. So many times, many self-antigens are actually skipped from training. Such B or T-cells can come out in circulation. Then they can find an antigen and bind with it. So that means a B or T-cell that we think is mature and good, may still have a potential to bind with a self-antigen. So we need peripheral tolerance. 
So what happens now if this B cell has become activated in the periphery, then we see once again, did it become activated to a self antigen? If so, if yes, then one outcome is energy. The same thing as we saw before, in the energy we tell that B cell that, hey, don't have your receptors anymore, decouple your signaling and just roam around free, you are useless or you should not work. And why does this happen? Because this B cell is not getting stimulated by the T cells who are responsible to activate the B cells. So this is a B cell that is running around. T cells know that, hey, this is, let's say this B cell is in, in heart. T cells over there know that heart tissue is heart tissue. So they're not releasing any cytokines or chemokines. B cell just went and said, I want to attach with the heart, heart tissue. But T cell over there says, or the innate arm over there says, you know what, this is our tissue. We're not giving you any cytokine signals. Now this B cell says, oh, I'm so embarrassed. I'm so ashamed of what I just trying to do. I am going to downregulate myself and I'm going to go in energy. So this is peripheral tolerance. That is one mechanism. There is also the mechanism of apoptosis. So the same B cell in the heart that was trying to attack the heart and the other innate arm cells said, no, you can't. We are not giving you any signals to attack this place. That B cell can commit suicide as well, apoptosis, and die too. It would say, well, I'm so, so sorry. I think I should just die and then dies. That's also possible, deletion. And this is also possible at the T regulatory cells. And for B cells, especially the, the follicular helper T cells. Follicular cells are those cells that live in the lymph node. Remember, we talk about affinity maturation and follicular dendritic cells. Similarly, there are follicular helper cells, T helper cells. Their job is to downregulate the immune system. Part of that is the B cells. So if we have a B cell that is misbehaving, that is, it is trying to attach to the self antigen, and there is a T helper cell that knows that we should not react to the self antigen, then that follicular T helper cell, I'm continuing to say T helper cell, this is not follicular dendritic cell, this is follicular T helper cell. It will actively release cytokines and chemokines to downregulate the B cell. So that is another mechanism to control such B cells. Now, how can this break down? Imagine SARS-CoV-2 is in our body or Streptococcus or EBV, there are so many viruses and bacteria that can do this. One, we discussed this yesterday as well. That is, imagine there is an infection. Let's use Streptococcus. There is an infection in some place. Streptococcus is there. So innate arm is active. Adaptive arm is active. That place is filled with chemokines and cytokines because local signaling is occurring. Local war is happening. And this little innocent B cell was circulating around in the body, just got produced in the bone marrow. And because of chemotactic agents, chemotactic agents are the chemical material that calls the immune system cells to come to the area of the infection or inflammation. So this B cell was circulating in this blood and it saw the chemokines and it went into that area. When it went into that area, this B cell, was actually a self-reactive B cell, not fully trained in the bone marrow. It ended up in this war zone. Over there, instead of picking a pathogen, let's say streptococcus, it actually got bound to tissue because it is a self-reactive B cell. And the presence, see this C, the flood of fluids, chemokines and cytokines, the flood of these things caused this B cell to become incorrectly activated. If this war was not happening and this B cell was connecting with the tissue, the T cells and innate arm will not give it any signal. They would not activate it and this B cell would die out of shame that what was I going to do? But here, because there is a war going on with the pathogen, there is plenty of cytokines and chemokines. B cell would incorrectly think that they are activating me and it would become activated. It would start making antibodies that would start attacking our tissues and we have an autoimmune disorder. 
So this is the local innate response and self-tolerance breakdown. Then the second part is the molecular mimicry. In the molecular mimicry, what happens is if you see this diagram, these are streptococci. Streptococci are bacteria. They make strips, long strips together. In They make chains under the microscope. You can see them in chains. That is why they call strepto. And then they are rounded in structure. That is why they're called cocci or cocci. So these are a few streptococci. These are the ones that cause strep throat sitting together. On these streptococci, so the book says, the book that I have been referring, on these streptococci, there are a bunch of patterns or antigens that are actually very similar to our heart muscle antigens or muscle tissue. Now, stop for a second. Before we talk about streptococci, your question will be, well, if there were any cells that were going to attack the heart, because that's what I'm going to say right now, right? Why were they not already attacking the heart before the streptococcus? And the reason for that is that before the streptococcus, these cells that may attack the heart were not getting any signals to be activated. They were just running around in the body. There was no chemokine or cytokine for them. Even if they would touch the heart, as I said before, Innetam would say, what the heck are you guys doing? And these cells would become energic or they would become apoptotic and die. But imagine there is a new B cell that is just formed, came out of the bone marrow, can attack the heart cell or heart tissue. And now let's go back to my story. So here we have streptococcus. Let's say somebody developed strep throat. Streptococcus has a lot of antigens on it, a lot of patterns on it that look like patterns on our heart muscle as well. This is the case with SARS-CoV-2 as well. This is the case with the vaccine as well. And when that happens, our, when the streptococcus comes in, our immune system becomes active. So innate arm. So let me go there for a second to show you the example. So here are the streptococci. Our innate arm becomes active. This is the macrophage. Macrophage is going to pick up this strep streptococcus or dendritic cell and eat it up, right? So it is holding these streptococci and going to phagocytose them. When it would phagocytose them, these streptococci would be picked up in the macrophage and then lysosomal com combination would occur. Phagolysosome will form or digestion of this pathogen would occur and the pathogen will be broken down, SARS-CoV-2 or or streptococcus or whatever else. And then here, this parts of this pathogen will be displayed on the surface with MHC2, for example. And imagine this little protein that is being displayed, this little part that is being displayed is very similar in structure to a part, tiny microscopic part of our heart tissue. Right now, here's a problem. This naive T cell was not exposed to heart tissue before because thymus, let's say, did not have this antigen pattern to show. And so this was sitting outside running around. When it bound with the macrophage, and macrophage and this had the secondary signals and tertiary signals and chemical signals and all hugs and kisses occurred or co-stimulation occurred, this T helper cell became T helper 2 cell. Now this T cell was self-reactive. That was the unfortunate part. Because it was self-reactive and we made it activated, it will activate the B cells that are also holding on to this pathogen. Now remember in the, in the body, there are many, many B cells. When you release interleukin 4, 5, 6, 10, but especially 4 and 5, that would not just activate every B cell. It would activate those B cells that have bound to some antigen. Imagine there are other B cells here. Another, 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 another. But they are just standing there. They're not doing anything. They're not bound to anything. 
if you pour interleukin 4 and 4, 5 on them, they would not react. They say whatever. But the ones that is holding on to a pathogen or an antigen or is bound to an antigen and you pour interleukin 4 and 5 on that, that B cell will become active. Now here is a problem. This T cell was not supposed to get activated. But it got activated. Now that T cell is going to make the incorrect B cell activated as well. It's partner B cell. So when this B cell now becomes active, it is going to say, all right, I'm going to start making an antibodies that can attack this pattern. Now those antibodies are going to be self-reactive antibodies. When they will be released in the blood, they're going to go and attack that tissue against which they are, with which they can bind. And we have an autoimmune disorder. And this could be SARS-CoV-2 causing it and cardiac toxicity can occur. This could be, we are seeing some people with vaccines, this is happening. We can see with the EBV, with Coxsackie, with Streptococcus, that this can happen. So if I go back here for the summary diagram, this one, this is cardiac tissue, it is a branching tissue. This is Streptococcus. Streptococcus pattern is incorrectly seen on the cardiac tissue as well. And the immune system sitting in the middle becomes reactive to streptococcus in that process unknowingly damages the heart as well. So this is the breakdown of the B cells behavior or self tolerance in the presence of a microbe. What I did not discuss in these talks are, I did not discuss the breakdown of self tolerance or autoimmune disease because of genetic factors or environmental factors or microbiome dysregulation. So microbiome are, or those pathogens that are our friend, that live on the skin, that live on our mouth, GIT, that live in our gut, and they also help regulate our overall immune system's behavior. I did not talk about these three factors. I only focused on microbes. So I hope that this clarifies the basic question. Maru from UK and many other folks had asked this after my previous discussions that how come our system, our immune system that is tolerant to us, all of a sudden becomes upset and starts attacking us. This is the reason. Now, one more thing in this, that, that study that I shared where auto ACE2 antibodies are formed, they say in that study, that these autoantibodies after a few months starts disappearing in majority of the people. So this is the discussion. Thank you very much for your time. Please like, subscribe and share. If you would like to support this work, there is a link to buy me a coffee, another link to become a patron, one more link if you would like to be supporting with PayPal. I will come back in a few minutes and I'm going to read a letter by FDA to you. I would see you in a few minutes.